Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Aldridge. I'm an attorney with Bond, Shenick & King. I'm an associate in the Buffalo office. And I today is July 10th, 2020. So we are in the midst of the pandemic. We've been at this for quite a while, but still no real uh, sense of when, how, or if anything is going to get normal again. Um, so that's where we are. And I'm talking with um, Ann Fahey today. Ann is one of our summer associates at our firm. And she just started with us a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's pretty amazing that we are still um, having a summer program and still just keeping on with it. When I was a summer associate, three years ago in 2017. This, <laughs> the whole thing looked very different. Um, I started earlier in the summer and everything was um, fully in person and we just kind of functioned like a, <laughs> any other law firm would in, in normal times. And um, the in-person aspect of it was a really, a big, a big part of it, but obviously things are different this year. So. We're just gonna talk to Anne a bit today and just see um, what it's been like for her and how this is all unfolding on her end. So Anne, hi. Hi, thanks for having me, Mary. Of course. So um, tell us a little bit about like where you go to school and where you are in your, in your, um, your law school tract right now. So I am going to be a 3L starting hopefully in August at the University of Buffalo School of Law. So I was in my second semester 2L year when everything chaos struck. So UB decided to go virtual after spring break. So pretty much after St. Patrick's Day, um, I didn't return to campus. And we finished our semester off virtually, which was very different. Um, we had no GPAs, we were doing online lectures, some of them pre-recorded, some of them live on Zoom, which was better. Um, but it was definitely a very strange time just finding out that we weren't coming back after spring break um, because of everything that was going on. So definitely an interesting finish to my second year of law school. I imagine you were living in Buffalo at the when the semester started because you were going to Buffalo Law School? Yeah, so I live in Buffalo. So once we went virtual, it wasn't that big of a change for me in terms of my at-home life because I was living in Buffalo already. I wasn't living on campus or anything, so I didn't have to deal with that stress, figuring out what I was going to do or where I was going to go. Just because Are you from Buffalo originally? Yes, yes, I'm originally from here. So i um, been here since, since day one. So yeah, and then decided to go to UB because I wanted to stay home since I went away for undergrad. So still here. All right. So when you started the semester, what classes were you signed up for? So at the beginning of second semester, I was taking evidence, business associations, ethics. Um, what else was I taking now that I'm thinking about it? I took a class called crisis management, um, which was really cool. And that was it for my, yeah, for my second semester workload. And a lot of the classes, the transition to virtual learning was um, easier than others. My electives were, but then obviously the big classes like evidence and ethics, those were quite an adjustment to have to learn online instead of in person. Yeah, so I would imagine that you were doing lecture style like at the school before, before this all happened, right? Yes. And then how did you, so how did they communicate to you that everything was going to go online like what did the trans what did the transition look like it was actually really funny so it was midterm week and i had just taken my ethics midterm and everyone was kind of standing in the class and that's when cuomo announced that all the SUNY schools would be going online so you have yeah. half the people are finished with the midterm and half the people were kind of standing around in the class and still like look at this like oh my gosh and so that's when we found out so i think that was may 13th or mid-May and then it was kind of they told us UB told us we were all going virtual and we didn't really get any guidance just because there were so many different orders coming out with regards to education and stuff but then during spring break it came out that um, it was kind of up to our, it we would be virtual but it was up to our teachers if they wanted to do 
um, Zoom live lectures or if they were gonna do pre-recordings or anything like that. But yeah, we found that all out within probably a week. And then wow. we started up virtually after spring break. What were the conversations like amongst the students in response to this? I can imagine there was a sense of panic and chaos going around. What were yes, people saying? Was, it was very weird because we thought it would be this temporary thing. When it first happened, when we were going virtually, we thought, oh, we'll be back in time for finals. This is, this is just temporary because that's when I think Erie County only had maybe a few confirmed cases of coronavirus at that time. So we thought, oh, it will be okay. And then as time went on, um, that obviously changed. And it was interesting talking to other students from different law schools too. I have friends um, that go to um, law school in DC and their school is one of the first schools that came out saying pass fail. UB hadn't done that yet. So then there was there were those conversations like, oh, are we gonna have GPAs? Like what happens if I'm looking for a job and I have no GPA for my second semester? And then, so that became kind of an interesting topic of conversations because all the law schools, before they all kind of acted together and decided, okay, every single law school is doing pass fail. Some law schools were, some weren't. So it was just kind of confusing as to what everyone was gonna do, but then, and ended up being all law schools were just getting rid of GPAs for the semester, which I guess makes sense, but definitely different. I didn't realize that all law schools did that. I thought it was just a school by school decision. I thought that too. I know. So my friend who goes to school in um, DC, they kind of jumped the gun a little bit and said, you can choose to do pass fail if you want. Um, you, basically, it's your own individual choice, and then they had to backtrack on that a few weeks later. It was like, actually, that probably wouldn't wouldn't be that great of an idea <laughs> if um, some people are just electing to have pass fail and some people are electing to have GPAs. But for the most part, I believe that all um, ABA accredited law schools did mandatory pass fail for the most part. But I could also be wrong. But all my friends in different law schools, they were all pass fail. Wow. What did your final exams look like? That was a really weird experience. I was, I really wasn't looking forward to taking my exams at home because I like the, the test environment. It makes me more focused. And so I was taking all of my finals in my bedroom at my house. Um, it was very weird. I was lucky because I have access to a printer in my home, but a lot of my friends were taking multiple choice tests. Like, juggling between screens on their laptops and then for written exams having to read it online and kind of like flip back and forth between um, Exemplify the testing software and the actual exam. So it was it was very different and hard to take it when my bed was like three feet away from me and just like being in my house. It was a very it was very strange um, You know being okay and I'm sure maybe the teachers went a little bit easier on us. Um, I didn't hear of anyone that failed. I don't know what actually happened, but. Well, that's the thing about pass fail is nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully. <laughs> and it's really that's because, what we like to think. Yeah. Um, the only downside of the pass fail is you don't really have any validation. You don't really know where you stood. So it's like, okay, you need above, I think a 70% in the class to get a passing, but. Like, did I do well, or did, did I get a did 70 I get a 71? Or? Right. right, so it was, it was very strange, but I don't know. Hopefully next semester will be different. We still don't know. Um, yeah. But I guess we'll have to see. Well, let, let's back up just a, just a, a couple steps uh, to our interview process. So I actually was part of the, the interview team that did the on-campus interviews um, at at UB and um, I interviewed Anne and we of course thought she was fantastic and decided to hire her. But at that point we had a very different uh, conception of what our summer program was gonna look like. And um, of course things had to change in response to all this. So Anne, what were you expecting to happen for the summer and then how did it actually play out once you, um, once you finished your semester? So that was also an interesting topic of discussion between myself and then my, my other friends in law school that had summer employment, because on one hand, there were some of my friends that worked at other firms heard 
in April that either that they weren't doing it. It was just kind of like, we're sorry, but they just cut the whole program. Just, they just cut the whole program. So um, I was one of the last to hear and think I'm thankful that I'm, be, I'm able to work at Vons this summer and even be in the office, which is even better. Um, but so yeah, I was expecting, I think I got the email from Ann Perone in Syracuse about going to Syracuse for um, a week or so after yeah. Memorial Day. So that was, that's what I originally thought I was going to be doing. And then COVID happened. And then um, it was all just like very up in the air. It's like, will I be working this summer? Won't I? Um, just kind of, I didn't really know how I felt. I obviously wanted it to happen, but I was like, is it safe? Is it, I don't know, questions along those lines. Yeah. Um, but I was really happy to hear that Bond would be doing the program, even though it was shortened. So those two weeks or one week in Syracuse, those that wouldn't be happening anymore. But um, I was happy when I was updated that they would be able to accommodate both me for employment and me in doing in office work. So it's been very different. Um, I feel like the office culture is different just because there's not as many people here. But um, I'm just grateful because I still get ex like exposure to legal experience that I'm not really used to since I didn't do any sort of corporate work. Um, in my past legal experiences. So definitely different, different when I expected, um, but still very grateful that it's happening. Yeah, yeah, no, it is kind of amazing that we are actually able to pull this off. <laughs> um, but yeah, like super happy that you could, um, that you could be with us even just for a, an abbreviated time this summer. Do you have any idea what the fall is gonna look like? You alluded to this a second ago, with it still being uncertain, has, has, has UB given you really any indication? UB sent, I think it was about a month ago, an email about how we were going to be on campus pretty much for the fall, but it was going to be a hybrid situation. It was kind of mm -hmm. going to be up to your professor whether or not they wanted to have you come to campus or if they were going to do everything remotely. But the overarching message of that was that we could be on campus if we wanted to. But oh. classes would be up to our professors. And then a few weeks ago, we got updated again saying, never mind. Um, we're not going to do that, but we'll let you guys know on July 15th. So hopefully on July 15th, um, <clears throat> I'll have an update of what the fall is going to look like. I don't know if, if I have very high hopes of whether we're going to be going back to campus or not. But yeah, so they... They changed everything. Um, they took down the fall academic calendar. Mm. They disenrolled everyone from our fall classes. So I couldn't even see my schedule if I wanted to. You don't even know what courses you're taking. No. Um, no. So I, I don't know. Well, hopefully by July 15th, we'll have some answers. But I'm hoping well, that I won't have to do my semester from home again. But if it's the safest option, I understand. Yeah, I'm sure part of it depends on what the governor allows. Right. And, and I think the governor is doing an update about education on the 15th, and maybe that's why they're pushing, um, they pushed the date of letting us know what was happening. So it's, this is all an exercise in uh, dealing with uncertainty, it seems like. Definitely. Definitely dealing with uncertainty. Well, Anne, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording in just a second, but we, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this with us um and share your experience from your from your perspective so um again thanks a lot and good luck with the last the rest of your summer all right thank you so much mary